Hello viewers, welcome to our history class today. Our lesson three and our topic of discussion is sources of information on history and government. This is Elimu TV, your favorite channel where you get to watch and learn. Now on the sources of information on history and government, we are getting to unwritten sources. In our last lesson, we did introduce some of the unwritten sources of history on, on information on history and government. We said we have got oral tradition. Oral tradition was an example of uh, unwritten source of information. Now in today's class, we get to archeology. span This is your tutor, Rojab Michira. Welcome all. Now class, what do we expect at the end of the lesson? We expect that we should be able to state the sources of information on history and government and also get to state a few advantages and disadvantages of the sources of, of information on history and government. Now, as I said earlier, can you get to archaeology as a source of history, uh, as, as, as a source of uh, information on history and government? Now, archaeology, this is the study of the material remains from past human life and culture. Now, examples of um, material remains include, we have got the stone tools, we have uh, pottery, we also have got rock paintings. For example, for example, we can get to see there, those are artifacts. Those are remains of, uh, those are the material remains. For example, we can see pots there, we can see a spear there, we can see also a knife, right? We can see also a modeled um, skull of a person. Now, those are the material remains, those things that were used during the early man. Now, those are the remains that we get to learn in archaeology. Now, as we have said, class, if I take you back again, as we have said, class, that archaeology, this is the study of the material remains from past human life and culture, and they include stone, stone tools, pottery, rocks, uh, th those are the rock, the rock paintings, and I've given you an example of... Um, of the artifacts as we have been uh, as we have seen them there now can you get to look at advantages of archaeology what are some of the advantages of archaeology as a source now archaeology gives detailed information on material culture meaning we get to know what the culture of man right the things that man used now it gives a detailed information on material culture and also it gives a sense of time as the artifacts can be de uh, dated for example if you get a skull of a person the skull of early man now the archaeologist can be able to date when that man existed for how long as man existed that is why when we be getting to early man as a topic we'll get to know that homo sapiens sapiens has lived for a thousand years now in that case archaeology gives a sense of dating artifacts and another advantage of archaeology as a source is that it complements other sources of information on history of information and thus gives authentic information. So in archaeology, we get to get the factual statements, right? Or rather, we get to get uh, uh, authentic information on history and government. And also, another advantage is that it provides varied information depending on the material found at a site. So there is varied information depending on the material found at a given archaeological site. Having looked at advantages of using archaeology as a source, can you get to look at limitations of archaeology? Now, one thing you must learn that it is expensive source of information. So, in this case, yeah, remember you you need to hire people the, the specialized the the, the, uh, the specialist in a, in the study of archaeology, right? Now, you need to hire people. Now, that is why we say it is an expensive source of information, and also it is time consuming. How is time consuming? For example, the, the, issue, the, 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 the issue of uh, excavating the remains, there's the issue of going to know where the material remains are, right? There's the issue of finding the archaeological site, so it is time consuming. And also, some artifacts and fossils are fragile and can disintegrate during excavation. Now, when you are excavating those material remains, a number of them are, are fragile and they can break easily. And lastly, there are few archaeological experts and facilities for interpreting archaeological evidence in Kenya. For example, we can count the, the, the number of uh, archaeological experts we have, very few of them, right? In a radius of, an, uh, of 100 kilometers, you can maybe get one or none. So there are very few trained expertise. 
right, who interpret the archaeological evidence in Kenya. Now, let us get to look at how do archaeologists get to identify an historical site? How do they get to know that this place, we have, go, we have got an archaeological thing, right? Now, one, archaeologist may use long ex experience and skills to identify a potential site. These are people who are trained. Now, now that they are trained, they can use their long experience. They can use their long experience to identify an ecological site. Having looked at the experience, also, archaeologists look, uh, look for areas where faulting or erosion has occurred, exposing services that may give clues to finding fossils and artifacts. For example, where erosion or faulting has happened. Take an example of, uh, of, that, of that picture you are seeing there, right? Erosion has taken place, right? Now, when erosion has taken place, Tho those material remains that are in the soil, they are, they are excavated, right? Now through that, they get to identify the ecological site. And also another way of identifying an ecological site is that uh, some artifacts may be exposed during human activity. For example, cultivation. Now when man is cultivating, they may uh, expose some material uh, remains that are in the soil, or other those material remains that have been buried in the soil. Having looked at how archaeologists identify the historical site, let us look at how, what are some of the methods of dating fossils. How do they date a fossil? How do they know that this fossil existed from such a year to a certain year, right? How, 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 are they, how, how do they date a fossil? Getting to know how many years has the fossil um, been into existence. One, there is chemical dating. Then we have got the ge 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 geological dating. Then we've got stratigraphy, vision track dating, and statistical dating. All these methods of dating fossils, we get to look them at, um, at, a, length, uh, at a length of period when we're going to discuss those methods of dating, uh, of dating in details. Now, class, for our assignment, can we get to state the methods of dating fossils? We have just stated a few. Now, go to detailed information, get to state the methods of dating fossils. Now, for our research, can we get to refer to evolving world history formed to the Oxford University Press? And as always, this is a Limu TV, your favorite channel where you watch and learn. Always get in touch with us via our SMS line. There's a number there. You can text us or you can call us. They also, there's also, you can get as uh, via YouTube, where you can watch our classes online, Elimu TV, and also you can reach on us on, by, via Facebook and and also on Twitter at at uh, Elimu TV underscore Kenya. Thank you so much, and see you in the next class.